Hey everybody, welcome back, or if it's your first time here, thank you for visiting my channel, thank you for watching my videos, thank you for liking, subscribing, commenting. Today we're going to be discussing one of my books that recently came out. Um, it's technically a short story. It was also released independently as well as as a part of an anthology. It is called 400 Year Frost. This is the old book cover. I have a new book cover that I recently re-released it with. Um, because this one wasn't doing super great in sales, but those who have read my story and left reviews have found it to be really just exciting and stellar. One of those thought-provoking and feelings-evoking types of short stories. So I'm gonna go ahead and read you guys the blurb on the back and then talk about what inspired me to write this story. So, here's the blurb. Peter Garrison was lucky enough to get one of the last tickets aboard the final seed ship to leave the dying Earth. He was unlucky enough to be the only survivor when that very same seed ship dove face first into a star. Now he must learn to survive on a strange, lonesome planet and hope that someone, anyone, will come save him. But will his rescuers be amiable? Will he ever reunite with his family? What hope could there possibly be for the last man alive? So the inspiration for this story is actually, it lies in a, a, an attempt at a novel. It was either during NaNoWriMo or Millwordy, one of those time periods that I was writing between 2014 and like 2016, where I was really focused on just putting out as much content as possible and I wasn't super focused on quality. I wrote a story about a group of like AI type robot android beings that were living on a space station above Earth and they were supposed to be a part of a mission to go find other planets that were viable for human life. Unfortunately, before they were able to leave with their human counterparts, there was massive devastation on the Earth and the humans never arrived. Over the decades and eventually centuries, these AI woke up from their, like, automated sleep cycles and began to express the desire to each other that they wanted to start their mission. They had no idea about the devastation that happened on Earth, they had no idea when their humans were coming or if they were still coming, but they knew that they needed to complete the mission without really understanding that it was kind of useless at this point because all the humans on Earth were long since extinct. So they went on a journey, traveling across the stars and visiting different planets, and it was really poorly written, but it was a really fun story idea. And toward the end, they actually find a man on a planet, like a human being, alone on a planet, and he tells the story of what happened to him. Well, it's the contents of this story. And so I decided to sort of focus on him for this short story and his journey. Yeah, it's, I don't know, I really enjoy reading it, <laughs> even though, yes, I wrote it. There's a lot of authors who write stuff and then they never want to read it again, but for me, this is one of the ones that I will happily reread, and it is uh, approximately 50 pages long. It is written in first person limited, and it, it, it gets really depressing, but it looks up, you know, toward positivity at the end. It is dedicated to my English teacher in high school, Mr. Strawback, for being one of the people who really encouraged me to pursue my dreams and actually publish uh, content, you know, publish books. So um, I'll read you guys just a little snippet here. You never expect the ground to fall out beneath you, even if the floor you're standing on is rickety and old. Once you've walked on it for a while, you become accustomed to the creaks and groans of the boards as you traverse them. You learn to avoid the soft, rotting spots in the wood. You make plans to repair them after the end of the wet season, along with the roof leaks that cause them. You tell yourself it can wait a few more weeks. You might even know that a spot or two will break before the rain stops. So you tell yourself you're prepared for when that happens. But the instant your foot breaks through that weak wood and you fall, you are surprised. You panic. You shout. For a moment you feel as though your heart stops. There was a hiss as my hypersleep pod opened. Stiff limbs came awake with a painful jolt as the adrenaline coursed through my veins. Pins and needles throbbed in my joints. There was the sound of klaxons blaring and the sensation of boiling air. My lungs ballooned in my chest as I gasped with a burnt, living breath, and I quickly lurched over the side to the biohazard receptacle as months old dinner emptied itself from my stomach. The puking was always inevitable. 
The first few wake-ups trained us to just let it happen. But the needles sticking out of my chest, the emergency protocol lights, feeling like I was being cooked alive, Hannah and Sam missing, all of that was new. It was wrong. They gave us books to read, protocol to follow for situations like this, but those books never took into account the human tendency to panic. Our emotions control us. Emotions and logic, irrationality and pure fact, simply don't get along. So as I gave in to my primal urge to frantically unlatch the cabin door, I did not consider ch checking to see if there was a fire in the common area. I did not test to see if the door was hot. I pulled the latch, twisted the handle, and flung the door open without care. And I was nearly blinded for that carelessness. The light pouring in from the windows in the atrium was searingly bright and hot. I knew then that somehow our ship had become Icarus. We were too close, and our wings were on fire. It was time to ditch. So that's it, really. Uh, I'll put a link to it in the description, but that is 400 Year Frost by JB Lettercast. That's me. Um, if you would like a signed copy, just shoot me uh, a comment on here, uh, and we'll, we'll figure out how to get in touch. And of course, you can also subscribe to my newsletter, where I talk about updates on my books. You can get access to free and discounted content at iLettercast.com. Uh, because I did have a Patreon. It's still set up, but I'm not currently using it, so that's kind of the best way to access that type of content.